You know those times when you've gotten into trouble, but you never realized your idea was bad until it was too late? That's sort of like what happened to Stockfish in this game. On the white side of a King's Indian, Stockfish always liked its position according to the evaluation bar you'll see in this video, but Alpha Zero had other ideas in mind. The game starts off in the King's Indian, and Stockfish chooses to face it with the Samish variation. And this is seen as very solid. The pawn on f3 defends the pawn on e4. It also prevents any black piece from going to the g4 square as, well, the pawn defends it. So castles, bishop e3, c5. All of this is theory. This is not a pawn blunder. It's just a temporary sacrifice often where black gets sufficient compensation and in practice does quite well. So knight e2, knight c6, and now d5 to attack the knight. And all of these moves make perfect sense. The pawn on c4 was hanging, so knight g3 protects it. And e6. When you have less space, you tend to want fewer pieces to remain on the board because otherwise your pieces are stepping on each other's toes. So bishop e2, trades, and h5. The knight on g3, not a great piece. And black can expand on the king's side, kick that knight out of the g3 square, and potentially initiate a kingside attack. Castles, h4, knight h1, only square. An ugly square, of course, your knight's in the corner, but it's going to quickly get back into the game via knight f2. Now, knight h7 makes a lot of sense here, trying to go pawn to f5. You want to chisel away at white's very good-looking center and then get some counterplay. Now, Alpha Zero played a move that I would not play in a game, but maybe now I would that I've seen this one, h3 because I would fear that that pawn has gone too far. The only piece defending it is this bishop on c8, and if this pawn moves later to g4, and the knight comes to f2, that pawn may be a goner. Now also look at the evaluation on the left side of the board here. 1.17 in white's favor. So Stockfish, which is the uh, engine that the chesscom server uses, likes the position. Of course you need to analyze this position in more depth, but it says that white is better. But Alpha Zero doesn't believe that. G3 was played, bishop d7, rook c1, and now b5, a thematic move saying that please take this pawn. If you take on b5 with the knight, I just go rook to b8, and my rook is coming down into the position on b2. So just to show a sample variation of what can happen is knight d6, rook takes b2, and let's say you keep trying to take my pawns with bishop takes c5. So white is temporarily up two pawns, but black has great counter chances with a move like bishop to a4. The bishop on e2 is going to be captured if you move your queen and take on a4, which you have to do. Because if you play queen e1, here comes a beautiful shot, knight to d3. Now, if you take on d3, which if you don't do that, you're just losing all the material, here comes rook g2, check, and mate. So that would just be absolutely devastating. So, you know, queen takes a4, just to show a sample line, rook f2, trying to fend off this rook on the second rank. Then knight takes f3 check comes, and you see this evaluation bar sort of swinging here. Black is going to be the one who is just completely crushing, and now you see finally the evaluation bar continues to sink, and that shows that black is the one in charge. So, after b5, no capture, knight f2, but here's sort of the depth that it seems like black is in danger of overextending, because we'll see rook e8, still don't want to take that pawn on b5. And after king h1, just getting the king what looks like to safety, b4, knight b1, and black has some structural issues here. This knight is trying to quickly plug the c4 square, and from c4 it hits the d6, and it trades away black's best pieces, knight on e5, but check this move out. Bam! Knight e to g4. I was not anticipating it at all when I was first shown this game because what kind of move is that? You're giving up your knight for what looks like just one pawn. But the evaluation is 1.3 in white's favor right now. Again, that's silly stockfish. But look how quickly the dynamic of the game changes. Pawn g4, knight e4. Now all of a sudden I'm threatening knight takes g3 with check over here. And once that pawn um, is captured, then I can take your e3 bishop with my rook, right? So all of a sudden lines are opening up in black's favor, not to mention that this bishop on g7 has a new lease on the board because the b2 pawn is hanging. 
So trade on e4, bishop f4, okay, coming after the d6 pawn. So queen e7 protects, bishop f3, and now bishop takes b2. So offering a series of trades because now all of a sudden black has two pawns for the piece, and this g4 pawn might fall next, so that would be a third pawn. So bishop takes d6. Taking one pawn back, queen d6, bishop e4, and we see that black currently has just one pawn for the knight. But it's not the quantity of pieces that alpha zero is sniffing out here. It's the quality of them. Because look at the play here, bishop b5 hitting the rook on f1. The rook moves. Rook to e8, sort of pinning this bishop. The bishop was nowhere good to go. And black is just trying to push this c5 pawn down to the c3 square. Just when you have a passer, you want to keep advancing it. Knight d2, c4. What did knight d2 to do to stop that move? Absolutely nothing. If you take on c4, you're just going to lose very quickly because after queen c5, my queen's coming to f2. I'm knight d2, queen f2, and you can't stop me from sacrificing my rook on the e4 square, in which case you're going to have problems on the light squares. So it's going to be check and mating ideas. So knight takes c4 doesn't work, so knight f3. And it looks like alpha zero plotted this out to equality because, again, white is still up material. So if black isn't doing something quick, white will just consolidate and win. So queen f4, ignoring the queen trade, queen c5. I should say avoiding it instead of ignoring it. Knight e5, and now rook e7. So calmly defending the f7 square. The pawn from c3 can push the c2 at uh, a moment's notice. And white's king is still not very happy there, trapped in the corner. So queen f6, c2, threatening c1 equals queen. And knight takes g6, so blasting open black's king. But this just fizzles out very quickly. So alpha zero can just take it, and d6 is one last-ditch effort just trying to, you know, it would confuse a human, but these are not human, right? These are <laughs> um, engines here wor working their magic. So bishop h7 check. Okay, you can take it either way, but the point is now it's just a series of checks. And so the game ended with a million checks. So this part of the game, we're just going back and forth until its natural conclusion of a draw. So a really fascinating game this one was. Um, sacrificing the knight on the g4 square, catching me by surprise, perhaps catching the Stockfish developers by surprise, but Alpha Zero really plotted this ahead. I mean, this was something fascinating. And just getting to the game's conclusion, might as well show you the rest here as it was just a bunch of checks. And the evaluation bar is just sticking at zero because the king can't escape all these checks. So um, the draw was finally reached. But just to go back and emphasize one last time for all the viewers here is that, you know, you get this position. You know the plan is to go b5. But it's not clear that a move like knight e to g4 will ever work. So if you don't capture my pawn on b5, then once I get b4 in, this bishop on g7 opens up. The whole position opens up, and black had just enough play there to hold the balance. So a phenomenal move, just to show that on the board once more, knight e to g4. I mean, that's for the highlight reel. A full piece sacrifice, get a couple pawns, but the counterplay, the momentum gained was enough to hold the balance. So really nice showing by Alpha Zero, taking advantage of that kind of critical calculation, that really deep plan that no engine is seeing several moves in advance.